Martin has, you know, been on so many uh, groups, has represented farmers in so many committees, has, has always had that leadership within him, uh, and he's expressed it. Uh, when I think about leadership, I think about work ethic, I think about trust, I think about integrity, uh, I think about being grounded. Welcome to another video. It is particularly of interest to hurling fans, especially if you're from Tipperary. It's also of interest to farmers, especially if you're an IFA member. We have Liam Sheedy speaking in support of the Martin Stapleton's campaign for IFA president. We hand you over to John Lavery. Chairperson of Limerick IFA. Okay, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, former, former IFA presidents, deputy president, uh, fellow farmers and IFA members, fellow IFA county chairs and commodity chairs, regional vice president, welcome to the official launch of Martin Stapleton's campaign to run for president over the next two months. Um, I would now like to call on Lee G, um, former uh, temporary county manager, uh, television contribu contributor on the Sunday game, and I suppose we can't hold it against him, it might be six in a row, but the gap here was taken, taken by Lee and temporary, so I call on Lee G to, to give us a few words as, I suppose, as a motivator, team leader, and get the best out of the team. Lee, thanks very much. Thanks, Sean. Thanks very much. Uh, it's great to be along uh, this evening. Pleasure to share, share the stage with uh, such esteemed speakers. Uh, and also, privileged to be along uh, for the for invite that's in it for, for, for Martin. Um, Look, I'm, uh, I certainly won't be, I'm not here to talk about, about farming, that's for sure. My experience of farming was uh, back in Portugal in, in various farms uh, when I was young there trying to make some ponds, uh, cleaning out sheds and milking cows and uh, bringing in a few bales and doing a few things like that. And uh, I suppose look, it didn't do me any harm, certainly. I got, I got a lot of skills. And the one thing I learned from farming when I was growing up is that if you worked hard, you know, you'd be okay. Uh, and I'd like to think that I brought that work ethic uh, that I had on farms in Portugal right throughout. Uh, Marty Samuel was one of the farmers we used to work with, but actually when I was driving in the gate, uh, my dad died very young, so my godfather Christy used to bring me out there. So Christy had a wheel go off for her season, and we used to go to what was known at the time, Limerick Junction, so I always thought it was Limerick, but actually I'm in mean, the home of Tipperary, so it's not the better. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we used to go to the races over in, over in uh, Limerick Junction, uh, towards the evening, Kind of eating on, but uh, uh, Christy was a big Carbon City fan. I don't know if any fun to race, but back in the day, Jim Draper had race, horse called Carbon City, and a great horse in England called Desert Orchid. Uh, they were having the argument then about who's going to win the Gold Cup, and Marty was the farmer, and Christy was saying, Our oh, Carbon City will win it. And Marty said, Do you want to set your real fall? You fall in the whole time. And uh, Christy made the fatal mistake of saying that, uh, Well, he said, Desert Orchid falls too. And uh, Marty turned around and said, Because he was an unbelievable jumper. And Matthew turned around and said, Yeah, he fell once, uh, Christy. He fell out of his mother's nurse. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew's here with a farmer, and that's the only time he doesn't know what he But what I am, what I suppose, what I'm here to talk about, seeing is just, uh, I have a lot of experience of, of leadership in certainly volunteer organisations, and a lot of my day to day jobs uh, over the last 20 to 30 years has involved leading people. Um, and the reason I'm here tonight is that I want to talk about maybe five aspects of leadership. Um, because I think they very much represent the man here on my left uh, that's looking to take up a very, very senior position, a very, very important position within the IFC. Um, so the first one for me is, you know, an exceptional leader. Uh, and I think Martin has, you know, been on so many uh, groups, has represented farmers in so many committees, has, has always had that leadership within him, uh, and he's expressed it. Uh, when I think about leadership, I think about work ethic, I think about trust, 
I think about integrity, uh, I think about being grounded in humility and always, you know, wrapped into your family and knowing exactly where you came from and what your background is. Uh, and I think all of those qualities uh, Marin has, and they're something that I always look for uh, in leader, they're something I always aspire to. So, for any organisation that flourish right now, you could pick any example in business or sport where it doesn't go well, you can always knock it back to leadership. If you don't have the right leadership, Ireland would not be where they are in this World Cup if it wasn't for the leadership that they have off the pitch. Uh, so be under no doubt, the decision that the ISA is going to make is a really, really important decision. But if you get the right leader in the organisation, the organisation is in very, very safe hands. And if I'm listening to John there, there's a few things to be sorted out, so you need the right man to help. Uh, but that's the first thing for me. Uh, the second one is, is servant leadership. There's loads of leadership styles out there. You know, there's five billion books you could read on leadership. Uh, but to me, an important part of leadership is servant leadership. Uh, and that means ultimately serving the people that you represent uh, and serving the organisation that you, that you stand for. Uh, and I think it would be safe to say that Martin has that, that servant leadership. Uh, Bill George, who was CEO of Medtronic, uh, used to always say, I get out of bed in the morning, he says, which yeah, the goal, my simple goal every day is to serve the company that I work for, the organisation that I work for. But most importantly, what he said, the people within that organisation. And that's what servant leadership is all about. And that's where you just push your ego to one side. It's not about you standing up. There's loads of examples over there in the US and various places where you can find leaders that when you actually dig through them, you're, they're, they're watering, they're not there. You know, they don't really represent their people. They're on that ego trip. So having that really strong leader at the top is, is hugely, hugely important. Uh, so the, the third one I, I mentioned is you have to be able to take on challenges. You know, um, in life and in leadership roles, it's never about you know, there's going to be setbacks. Uh, there's going to be setbacks, but the most important leader you want is that someone that's able to bounce back. And someone that's able to straight away to not think about the problem, but jump, jump to the solutions. A bit like when Nimrick gave me a hammer there in 2019. Uh, and that was final. There was no point in feeling sorry for myself. I had to get back to the house straight away the following morning. You know, but being able to bounce back from set, setbacks. And I think your organisation has challenges. And the sector, is, the sector has challenges that's coming down the tracks. And you need strong leadership to be able to drive on, to take on those challenges head on, and bring people in around you. And as a, you know, the biggest thing I do as a leader is surround myself with great people. And if you get the right people around you, you can solve any problem. There's no, there's no doubt about it. So I think the ability to take on cha uh, challenges is going to be really important. Um, look, number four for me is, is building good relationships. You know, somebody that you're able to talk to. Whether you're at the top of the organization, whether it's someone out in that firm that's at the lower level of the organization, that you can just engage and connect with people. To me, the most important thing in life is that connection with people. Uh, I've done nothing, if I go through my own career, nothing I've done, I've done on my own. Everything I've done through people with people. Place a real value on building relationships, and I know Martin does too. So, being able to connect with people uh, is going to be really important. And that brings me to my last point, which is the volunteer. You know, if you take the GA, nothing in the GA without the volunteer. The person that's down the pitch, the person that's probably down at the field this morning with the under nines or the under tens, when nobody's watching. Very easy for himself and John Kennedy and all the others to go up in the middle of the Crow Park and there's 82,000 people there. But the volunteer that's down there lying in the pitch, the volunteer that's down there training the under nines and the under tens, that's what the organisation is all about. And all the volunteers want is someone to look up to. Someone that's going to, going to really look after them and be there for them and make sure that you're looked after in a way that's appropriate to the work that you're putting in and the wonderful job that you do within this country. Um, so I think the volunteer is really counting on strong leadership and having that pride in the jersey that says I represent you and I'm clear what I represent. Uh, and as I said, you know, I've seen the impact of, of people having pride in the jersey and, and the, the wrongs they can go to. Um, so it's really important. Um, and look, the last point for me is that, you know, you're a number of weeks out now from the, from the big post. It's a bit like that. You have to run into a monster fight and a lot of final, you know. Um, you know, but I, I think it's it's always important that, you know, in any build up to any match you have to leave it all out there. Every bit as much as, you know, myself and any other manager, you're trying to fill pro power with your supporters on the day of the game, you know, to make sure that they get the role in. Um, it's very similar in this, you know, there's two people going head to head, but you know, there's no point in waking up on the Monday morning after the result and saying you should have would have put it. If only we did this, or why didn't we do that, or we should have maybe done that. You know, I, I, I always love to get to the stage where I'm above and on our final day, it's far past three and I fold the arms, and I look to the two boys and say, we've ever done it. We've ticked every box we wanted to take. No regrets. And it's great to be in that place to know that if you look back over the last three weeks, in the build up to our final, I wouldn't change a thing. 
And I think, you know, your build up to your all Ireland final is starting now. And it's up to everybody in this room to get in behind what this man is trying to achieve, but he can't do it on his own. You know, he's got a great support in Siobhan, a great family behind him. It's great to have the background. And I know, I know what it's like to have a, a mother, I'll never forget your mother, she made me the person I am. So to have your mother in, in this room and behind you as well is huge. But he does require everybody in this hall to connect and push themselves out and really encourage the people to get out and vote for Martin. Because if that doesn't happen, you'll be in sure that wouldn't put it and you'll have regrets. And as I said, it's a great feeling no matter which way it goes. And my mother always told me, what's well, far you won't pass away. You know, but if the work is put in by the people in this hall and you get in behind you, they've no doubt you'll be successful. So I just want to wish Martin the very, very best to look uh, as a temporary man coming in here. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, I want to wish him the very best to look. He's married to a good temporary woman, so we're all behind you. And uh, as I said, hopefully uh, all goes well. And uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks very much. Thanks, Lee. I suppose, you know, that was a very short speech there, you know, but um, he laid out five principles there on leadership, um, which are very important. And, you know, I, 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 you know, watching and discussing with Martin, you know, everything around his campaign, you know, I think Martin has a lot of those characteristics, and that's certainly why he's worth, worth, worth supporting. Um, Liam gave us a call to arms, a call to arms there. We have a job to do over the next five or six weeks to get Martin State in elected. This is it for this video. Also on this channel, you will hear Martin Stapleton's launch speech. Here's a little preview of it. I'm fighting to restore respect for farmers. I'm fighting to foster unity in the IFA. I'm fighting to ensure that we have the freedom to farm and to protect our incomes so that we can all have a viable livelihood. Link to this video will be located at the end of this video or on the description. Please buy me a cup of coffee for a full extended show. Full instructions on how to redeem the extended video is on the description. Comments are welcomed. You can tell me if the speeches were interesting or boring. If you're not, please subscribe to this channel. Please feel free to explore the channel. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and I'll see you in another video.